welcome friends to this afternoon session of the first day of our two day event in toronto very happy to see you again we will take up some questions if you have sent them and they'll be read out first i will read again and give you the answer First question, Master, please tell us how the ancient Egyptian pyramids were built. <laughs> as, has our consciousness as a society been hindered or progressed in the 21st century? Please tell us how the ancient Egyptian pyramids were built. How many of you feel you were there in Egypt at that time? One, two, three, four. There are five people to answer that question. <laughs> Has our consciousness as a society been hindered or progressed in the 21st century? Progressed and hindered at the same time. Progressed with more opportunity, hindered by more distractions. Both are working together. The opportunity to find masters, opportunity to seek has increased because there is more disappointment amongst people. There will less disappointment because less expectation. As civilization has grown and more things and people and things are available, we get more attached to more things. And therefore, it's become difficult. That's a hindrance with the increase of comfort in this physical world, the hindrances increase. But the opportunity increases because of disappointments and more seeking. More people are today feeling this is not my place than they were long ago. So that is why both these things are happening at the same time. And they will continue to happen for several years from now. But more opportunities will come for seeking more masters will appear, more perfect living masters will appear for the same reason. So both things happen at the same time. Dear Master, does being initiated by a perfect living master guarantee the absence of fear and doubt and insights of the eternal level, internal levels? Will the initiate see the internal light and radiant form of the master? Does being initiated by a PLM, which means perfect master, guarantee the absence of fear and doubt and insight of the internal levels? Will the initiate see internal light and radiant form of master? Fear, as I explained in the morning, is a function of doubt. Doubt is a function of the mind, a natural function. It's not artificial. So when we are living a life guided by the mind, we will always have doubt and fear. When you lead a life guided by your soul, you will not have doubt and fear. This certainty of everything and absence of fear comes when you have that knowledge. Knowledge will come when you live a spiritual life. Spiritual life starts from here. As I mentioned in the morning, if you make your decisions with intuitive information, not with mental information, you're already moving toward the spiritual life. Then you will notice 
that when we act upon something, there are two wills operating inside us, a mental will and a spiritual will. We have practiced for years and years, generations, lifetimes, to use mental will for living in this world. A natural thing. But now we want to go back to our true home and meet spiritual will for that. Therefore, spiritual will comes from the soul. Intuitive knowledge is coming from spiritual will. Thoughts are coming from mental will. See, we are so used to mental will that in order to develop spiritual will, simple method is to say no to the mind. Not every time. Three, four times a week is good enough. When the mind wants to do something very badly, say no. Then the mind will make an excuse, why not only once, say no. It will say many other things, keep on saying no and stick to the no, spiritual will will develop automatically. We don't do that. We Mind persuades us to follow it. So we have to break that habit of the mind. Mind may be telling us some good things also. It's only when the mind is insisting on doing something, we are going very much with the mind. And that is when we should be able to say no. And I have found by practice, even if three, four times a week, you are able to say no strongly to the mind, mind becomes subservient to you and your spiritual will becomes stronger. Spiritual will will dictate what the mind should do. Mind is a thinking machine. If you tell it to think something, it will do, do it. I want to tell my mind, now talk about this, it will talk. I want to see the mind should now do my repetition of words, my simran, it will do. But if the mind tells me what to do, I neither do either of these things. So when we say we should tell the mind to do something, that's spiritual will. So soul has an expression through spiritual will to tell the mind. So mind should be used by us. It's a very good facility, very good powerful equipment, the mind given to us. Very useful. But use it. Don't let it be. Let it be our master. It is our servant. Treat it like a servant. You be the master. Tell the mind what to think at any time. Tell the master mind what to do. You are the master. So developing spiritual will can be done by saying no to the mind when it wants something the most. Just three, four times a week, you have very strong power of your own to use your mind. So far as seeing internal things, yes. When a seeker is given initiation, by a perfect living master. What does it mean? What is initiation? Initiation is a commitment by the master. I will take you back to your true home. That's why I've appeared in your life. Period. If you say, when does my journey, spiritual seeking end? According to me, it ends when you're initiated. People think it begins. People think our journey to spiritual home begins when we are initiated. And they think initiation means how to meditate, how to find things by yourself. That is not the meaning of initiation. Initiation is a commitment by someone speaking from the true home. Your turn has come. You arranged it. You don't want to end this show and go back home. I will take you because I am your true self. You discover me at the end that we are the same. So that is why initiation is a very big step. But since the mind does not accept it, mind has doubts, the masters become teachers. They are not teachers. They become teachers for the sake of our mind and say, do meditation like this. Mind says, that means something. Now work, more meditation. Yeah, we'll get more. If we do more, we get more. Mind knows that. We struggle hard. After struggling hard, we keep on failing. Then some thought comes to us. If it was merely a question of making effort, we have made so much effort, what have we got out of it? There has to be something else. Then you discover that there are, there are two things, effort and grace. Grace of the master and your own effort. That grace is really working to take you home, not effort.
but grace makes you do effort that we realize afterwards that you will not even think of making an effort but for grace so actually the whole thing is grace the realization comes in stages we start with effort then we say grace has come then we discover the whole thing was grace we could not even think of making effort if the grace was not there mind does not let us make effort mind wants to keep you occupied here so when you say is it a guarantee initiation by a perfect love master is a guarantee that you will go to your true home period will you see the eternal things depends on your progress because we're living in time and space living in a physical world the physical laws operate to that that means we see in stages at different times when doubts come something happens and it removes the doubt gradually these doubts are removed and some people make rapid progress and they come within days they are able to see inside they can go to causal plane they can go to even spiritual plane some people because they don't know why others don't know why because they have done this work in a past life this is not the only life in which we find spirituality we have done some work it wasn't complete we are completing it now so do not worry about other people's progress watch your own how far you are going and how much you are seeking an earnest desire to go in helping you to proceed further so meditation is for the mind love and the pull of love is for the soul these two will take you back the what you will see internally depends on the progress you make internally and i might say it is not always necessary to see internally let me give you an example my master baba savan singh had his own master his name was baba jamal singh baba jamal singh was an initiate of one swami ji seth shiv dial singh from agra uttar pradesh from where the radha swami term started when swami when uh, baba jamal singh was still a disciple he was missing his master there were no easy communications there were no telephones letters were very slow travel was more difficult so he was missing his master so much he wrote a letter to his master he said beloved master swami ji i am missing you so much please give me a chance to come and see you personally have your darshan i am missing so much i want to come right now fly to you but unless i give you permission i can't come after a month or so reply comes from swami ji beloved son jamal singh i have received your letter and i am very pleased to know that your soul is roaming around in the higher regions it's going around in the khand brahman Jamal Singh says, "My soul goes nowhere. This is a mistake Swami Ji has made. It must be letter for somebody else and mailed to me." So he wrote back. He said, "Swami Ji, my soul goes nowhere. I am just missing you, and I want to have your darshan. I just asked your permission to come and see you." Another wait, and another reply comes after a month. Dear beloved son, Jamal Singh, I am very happy to know from your second letter that your soul is roaming around in the higher regions. And so far as coming to see me is concerned, come in the beginning of next month. He said there is something wrong. Maybe Swami Ji has got too old. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't realize what he is writing. And he got little doubt. He said I have to go and clarify the doubt. so he carried both the letters to agra and he placed them in front of swami ji he said master you wrote these two letters in both letters you are writing my soul is roaming around in higher regions my soul goes nowhere i was just missing you and wanted to see you and i am very happy to see you swami ji laughed and said jamal singh let's meditate for a while 
So there were 10, 15 people sitting there. So took Jamal Singh inside his room there and they meditated about half an hour and they both came out. And then in the presence of those people, he said, Jamal Singh, tell me now, when I wrote that letter, first letter, was your soul roaming around or not in the higher regions? Yes, master. When I wrote the second letter, is it true that your soul was roaming around in the higher regions? Yes, master. He almost turned to the other people sitting there and said, Now listen, I am not asking you, Jamal Singh, if your soul was roaming around in the half an hour we meditated. I am asking you, was your soul roaming around when I wrote the letters? Months ago. He said, Master, my soul was roaming around two months ago when you wrote the letters. People could not understand what he said. So explain to them. He said, when disciples miss a master so much, it cannot happen by the S, but they sent up the soul inside. It cannot happen if you cannot make spiritual progress. When the missing is so strong, it's a sign of devotion and love. And that devotion and love does not grow independently of progress inside. But the progress inside is accompanied by blinders. So you can't see what is happening inside. We're still looking outside. Why is that? Because our karma, our pralabd, places obligations and duties on us. We have families to take care of, jobs to take care of. Therefore, although we in our daily life progress is taking place, but in order to fulfill the karma and not have to come back for that, the blinders are put on the inner experience. But you have to, you have the greater ability to do outer work, and you also at the same time miss your master so much. Therefore, remember, this is not the only sign of spiritual progress that you see things inside. This is also a sign of progress internally if you miss your master. And the more you miss him, the more progress you are making. Not only that, things that will happen in the carrying out of your duties and obligations in this world, you suddenly find there's a master's hand in everything. You say, I couldn't do it. How did it happen? I'm going to make a big confession to you today. I haven't done it before. I, I had several jobs in my career, which I should not have had. I was not a great student. I tried to pass my Bachelor of Science examination. I'll give you a personal example. Bachelor of, exam, Bachelor of Science examination hardly made it in the second division. No brains. Not that kind of smart. I said, when will I pass? I went to do MA class. I said, no chance of passing. I stood first in the university. Can I say it was my credit? What would I think when such a change took place by itself as a student? I had to see somebody's hand in this. I did not do better than the others. The others knew more and I knew that. I kept my mouth shut. So they should think I did it. Master did it. I, there's an Indian um, service called the IAS. Many of you might have heard of it. Indian Administrative Service. The replacement for the Indian Civil Service the British introduced in India. They called it Indian Civil Service. The strange thing is, it was neither Indian, nor civil, nor a service. <laughs> the British rulers called themselves ICS, Indian Civil Service. When they left the country, India got independence. They were going to call it ICS. But since it was associated with the British, they changed the title, called it Indian Administrative Service. It was a good service, good job. It, gave, it used to give good jobs. I said, I am going to try. I have got first class first in my MA. I am a very good candidate for IAS. I tried and failed. Another friend of mine passed. He told me, this is not like an MA exam. Some personalities are made for these things. You are not that type. 
sorry. I said, I'll try again. He said, why waste your time? I tried again with a lot of confidence. I am going to pass. What does he know? And I failed again. I said, I gave up. This is not for me. But something in me intuitively said, try one more time. And my mind was saying, no. Something was saying, try one more time. I tried one more time, listening to that inner voice against my mind. And there were 10,000 candidates that year. I stood second in 10,000. Can I give any credit to myself? What I am was shown two years, two twice earlier. What great master is, I found the time. So this is, having entered that service, very few people reach the top level, which can be either chief secretary of a state or secret, federal secretary there. So I had no hope of going anywhere high. But I did become Chief Secretary of Punjab State. And when I was Chief Secretary, every month we had a meeting of secretaries. Fifty secretaries of all the departments sitting in my room, the big room, big office. And the, each one had many departments. So 250 heads of departments sitting behind them. The whole government sitting there. I'm supposed to be Chief Secretary. I know nothing. I'm, this is a confession. Today I'm confessing because I retired, they can't take away my pension. <laughs> I knew nothing. They were very competent people. And I knew their competency from their work. And sitting, I am sitting, I looked at their faces. They were a little afraid what questions I will ask. I did not know what question to ask and they were afraid of my questions. I just asked one person about some progress that construction of the bridge was going on. Can you tell me something? So he told me something. I remembered in my heart. I said, I should remember what he told me because he will forget. Then I asked other people similar things and after some time I pounced upon the same man asking details of that thing, mentioning that thing. He said, he knows everything. I knew nothing. I'm telling you my personal experiences. How could I be a successful officer if this was going on? Instantly I knew, this is not me. This is my master doing. All my life I have known I could have done nothing but for my master. So that is why, what does it do to you when these experiences happen? What happens is you can begin to feel the hand of your master. And it's very interesting. He first shows you who you are. Then he shows he is. So I had both kind of experiences. Oh, I tried something very hard. I tried business. Couldn't. I tried business. I was a failure. And then suddenly we made billions next year. How can that happen? So everything you can see the hand of master. He shows you your competence. He shows you his. Now what happens to your faith and your love for the master. It keeps on increasing. This is not an internal experience. External experience. So the external experiences coupled with the internal experiences and the feeling of missing your master and feeling love for him. All three are great guidelines for progress you are making. So do not have a mistaken notion that only by seeing inside you make progress because of the obligations and karma we have to fulfill outside. Masters, do put blinders so you can carry out this quickly. Why quickly? Somebody even asked me, is it true that when we meet masters, our karma is accelerated? It is accelerated if you don't want to come again. If it is to be spread out, it can go into more lives. If you want to take it easy, we have been taking it easy so far. So when somebody is very keen, I don't want to come back again. The balance karma, which could be paid off in three lives, is concentrated mostly in this life and some of it at the astral plane and causal plane from which we never come back. So, so this is how we get the information about the progress. So internal, 
views are always available and to start with do your meditation with love and devotion secret love and devotion not meditation people have done mechanical meditation got nothing oh i do two and a half hours because master said do two and a half hours meditation very hard but i do it what did you get not much i got tired there was a friend of mine in san francisco he invited me to come and spend time with him i was in india at that time i traveled all the way from india very tired and i reached his house and it was night time he served me some supper some little something to eat said i am very happy you are here we'll meditate together at 3 o'clock in the morning the right time for meditation i said i thought i would sleep i thought i'll rest now but i have to keep up my face i am a very good satsangi of a great master the ego was still there a little bit to show off so i agreed all right we will meditate for two and a half hours so he, by alarm on the clock he woke up time for meditation i went sat in lotus position he also sat next to me and we closed our eyes to meditate my thoughts were not on meditation my thoughts were how long can he meditate how does he meditate i don't know how these thoughts came but from time to time i would open a corner of my eye to see what he was doing i don't know whether it's coincidence or what every time i opened my eyes he was doing like this <laughs> looking at his watch so hard to complete two and a half hours every 10 minutes look like two and a half hours you all know that many of you know that that when we meditate we can't have any idea because we think we meditate long enough the clock doesn't support us so we with the great difficulty kept on sitting tired and meditation ended two and a half hours and he said is was so happy we could meditate together so much beautiful i said yes it was good meditation but i can tell you it was meditation on your watch because every now and then you looked at the watch so you did not did not meditate on the third eye center you did not meditate on your master you did not remember him if you had remembered him i can assure you you would have forgotten your watch but you were looking at your watch and i i could not remember my master i was also looking at your watch so we both were good meditators of our watch i am bringing this incident to your notice mechanical things don't work when you feel the love for a master that should be carried into meditation you should have what is called a dhyan contemplation of the master with your imagination imagine the master talk to him and do other parts of the meditation if you have been given a mantra simran repeat and see the master and then you can say master i am tired of repeating can you do a little bit for me and let me tell you he will do it for you in meditation what the easiest way of meditating than to sit and watch your master doing your meditation for you actually he can do everything for you including meditation if you let him but we don't let him our mind says i have to do something what is my role every time the mind wants to pick up a role and do something let somebody with power somebody with greater awareness do something for you mind does not let us do this mind think we can get nothing without our effort nothing comes to our life without struggle so we struggle on this but if your love and devotion is the primary thing meditation will become easy and you can notice it so that is why is mechanical meditation should be given up it's not the question of time 5 minutes of intense meditation with the master is worth more than 8 hours of mechanical meditation 5 minutes because that 5 minutes will pick you up more than the 8 hours which will be just tiredness tiredness that you're sitting too long legs are paining joints are moving 
great difficulty to sit for meditation. Why? Because you're forcing yourself to do it. When you remember master, you forget the body. Not master. I am saying, let us say, we are sitting amongst friends. I have sat amongst friends on the floor and we have been chatting, taking some snacks, eating, laughing, exchanging jokes. Two hours pass. We look, two hours have passed. I thought it's only ten minutes. And meditation, exact opposite. Why did our legs not pain when we were sitting with the friends? Why did we not have the restlessness when we were sitting with friends? Because we loved them, liked them. We were enjoying the company. When you start enjoying the company of your master inside, meditation will be the easiest thing to do. So that is why I keep on saying it's very important to remember the real thing on the spiritual path is love and devotion. Build that up by remembering him. People say, ask me simple questions in emails. How can we build love and devotion? Just remember him. Pool is already there. That's why you are following the master. You won't follow him. You are trying to do something because of that pull. That is the beginning of your love and devotion. We use these two words because love comes from master. And our response to that is called devotion. It automatically happens. That is why love and devotion are the secret. Great Saint Paltu says, Paltu sahib ke darbar mein keval bhakt pyaar. In the Lord's court, nothing counts but love and devotion. As the highest place is our love and devotion. That is why if you have love and devotion, you can get progress both inside and outside. Your Master, who created the first God that came into the world? Can you visit Jamaica once, please? <laughs> who created the first God that came in the world? Can you visit Jamaica once, please? I can visit twice. <laughs> Why only once? Are you, resist, are you against my visiting twice? <laughs> Certainly. I like to visit Jamaica. I heard about it. I have heard Harry Belafonte songs. Jamaican singer. Very nice, beautiful songs. And I have always liked that this would be a great place to visit. No problem. Part one of the question, who created the first God that came in the world? I am glad the word first has been put in there. But most people believe there is only one God. But when you say first God, you believe there are many gods. That's good knowledge. There are many gods. Not Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, you might think three gods. No. Those gods that in Hindu religion we worship as Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, they are merely the representation of creation of time at the causal plane. It means we created the beginning, the middle and the end. Instead of using the words beginning, middle and end, we are saying Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Time was created like that. And those souls who with good meditation and good karma took up the roles of creating the beginning, sustaining the middle, and destroying the end, creating the end, we gave them these names. These names are merely a representation of the causal level where time was first created. Because everything thereafter happened in time. Mind was created along with it. So mind cannot function without time. No thought can come in the mind without time. If I tell you something that is not in time and not in space, mind cannot even understand it. I'll give you an example. I have seen a mansion, beautiful, colored, lighted, beautiful mansion in zero time and zero space. Can anybody else understand it? Nobody can understand something that is in zero space and zero time. 
has a whole of creative powers living in that. And we are only confined ourselves because of the mind to experiences in time and space. That is why we give importance to Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, beginning, middle and end, because they represent time. Not only time, they represent everything has to be born and everything will die, no matter what, the whole of creation. It's a big message, big message that everything here finishes, where all three worlds of the mind, physical, astral, causal, everything finishes. When everything finishes, we call it a dissolution. This creation, dissolution, parallel. We talk of parallel, dissolution of the whole thing. Just because we finish this time and space. What about souls? Souls are part of one. But they were individuated, separated to experience the one. Does that also end? Yeah, that's also illusion. It's also a creation. Division is also a creation. The manyness is a creation. When that ends, we say, grand dissolution, mahaparla. These words have been created in the different religions that are expressing it in different ways. And they are referring to the different levels at which certain souls ascend and can perform certain functions. Most religions, not all, but most religions, talk of a god that's in the astral plane. The astral god lives in time and space and we worship him. We think that the prophets that have come are next to that god in time and space. We worship them, we think they are beings. They are beings and they are living in time and space. They are creating the universe from there, which is true. There is a soul that with its good karma becomes the creator of this universe. Sits in the top of the astral plane, nice throne. You like to go, you can go and see it. Many people have seen. Runs, creates and runs these two universes, astral and physical. That is God. People who have reached that level worship that God. Nothing wrong. And when people reach there, they think we have reached our true home. It's like a heavenly place. There's, we can fly, we have no weight on us, <coughs> no matter into us. Therefore, people have called it our true home, our heaven. Heaven is at that stage. There's no heaven above that. All heavens are there. There are many heavens, not only one. Many heavens, many hells. Now, what about the higher part? Where time itself is being created. Where the Brahma Vishnu Shiv starts. There are also three souls performing functions by their karma. Their term ends and they come back again into this physical world. I don't know how many of you heard, again from Hindu literature, about Lord Krishna, avatar of Vishnu, the one who's thought to be the most responsible because Brahma does a job of creation once, then he retires and waits. Vishnu has to take care of the creation for a long time. Shiva once and the job of Brahma and Shiva straight, one time. What about Vishnu? So many times. Therefore, Vishnu has to come several times to take care of these creations. He comes into physical plane and also astral plane. From causal plane, where the time was created. How does he take care of it? He comes and tries to bring people on the righteous path and tell them about higher planes. and Tell them there is something more. Don't get stuck here. They say he's come nine times already. And tenth people are waiting. He might have come tenth time, but people didn't recognize. So let's say he's, we are still waiting for the tenth time. These are called the nine incarnations of Vishnu. He started off his coming as a fish. You can check it out from the literature. He didn't come as a human being, he came as a fish. Because when he came, this planet Earth 
had nothing on it except water. It had rained for three million years. The whole planet was covered. The, all the vapor had condensed and became. That's scientifically true. Do you know where we are sitting? Is also from volcanic eruption from the water. Every land is one third or less of the planet is land today. The rest is still water. And a volcanic action brought the land up. He came as a fish. There was nothing else except water. Next time he came, the land was coming out. Came as a tortoise. All this is given. Then when the land was there, animals could come. He came as an animal. He followed Darwin's law of evolution and came according to what was available here. He took care of it as it was. He came as a dwarf, came a big man, came as Krishna. When Krishna came, he had some enlightenment from very early on, though even enlightenment is picked up. Very few babies speak, but when they start speaking, they can feel more than we can feel. So Krishna, the avatar of Vishnu, he grows up in a family where he is given the job of taking care of cows, a cow herd, and he takes care of cows and takes them to graze with his young friend, very close friend, whose name was Udo. Udo and Krishna go to feed the cows on the grass in the fields outside. And one day, Krishna surprises Udo by saying, Udo, you cannot understand the law of karma. And he points out to an ant crawling there. This is all recorded story. An ant is crawling there and he says, Udo, this ant was on Brahma, the creator of this universe. Another time he was Indra, one of the lords of one of the heavens in the astral plane. Today, because of his karma, in spite of those experiences, he is today an ant. He says, there is no way to atone for, uh, atone for an action. When you perform something knowing it's a sin, you will be punished no matter how long it takes. That's how the law of karma operates. People have no idea how relentless it is. People think, I did something bad, let me give some charity, do some good deeds, I'll atone for it. No. You're punished for what you think was bad, you're rewarded for what you think is good. That's how it works. It never ends. If you could atone, we could run back to our homes. The law of karma traps us because there is no atonement. Each action, each karma, is responsible for its own consequence. And both can take place. It can happen in one human being's life. He does so many bad things that he is entitled to hell. And then he realizes how bad I was, transforms himself. The best person in life, most virtuous, does all good things, entitled to heaven. When he dies, when we, we all die, what actually happens? You can get some idea by dying while living, a better idea by going higher. That when we die, the whole of our life is revealed to us backwards, like flashes. Flashes come of our life, what we've done. And those flashes actually are the birthplace of our next life. We realize what we've done. On realizing, there is one soul, angel of death, Dharmraj, whatever you call whose duty is to point out to us, this is what you did, this is what the result of that is going to be. Just one soul in that job must have a good computer. I sometimes used to feel he must have a good computer because he's going to figure out how to meet all the same people again and again with whom he had actions, which of course was a mistake. I'll clarify sometime to you how that was a mistake. But what he does shows you. For the bad things, you have to spend one month in hell. The good things, you can go to heaven for one month. And a choice, perhaps the only choice we get at that time is given. Which one want, do you want to do first? Whatever answer you give, there he does it. Now, I know you are not going to heaven or hell. You are going to a true home. But supposing I were to ask you this, just a theoretical question. 
if you were given this choice one month in heaven one month in hell where would you like to go first those in favor of hell those for heaven the road the rest don't want to go anywhere <laughs> this is a divided opinion i got hands raised on both things the reason was simple those who want to go hell first say if we go to heaven first the thought of hell will always make our heaven into hell those who want to go to heaven first they say who knows in heaven we might do something avoid hell so i can understand the mind the working of the mind but this is how law of karma operates and that is why when we say we cannot get out of the cycle of karma the reason is non atonement dear almighty father when an initiate is going through intense karma of physical pain and suffering what should he or she do to seek help from the master will the master help the initiate when an initiate is going through an intense karma of pain and suffering what should he or she do to seek help from the master will the master help the initiate ask for help he will help simple every time ask for help master sitting inside you not outside if you are initiated the initiation takes place put the master's radiant form master's inner astral form inside you instantly at the time of initiation you don't have to go to master anywhere just ask the master inside he'll help you you try it out just one little thing if you are able to see the master then the help is not only rendered you can see master helping but if not you'll see how he will transform make an intense karma of suffering into a very easy part that you will not feel the suffering the same way why does he not remove the suffering he could remove the suffering also but he will make it look like the person is having suffering the person won't feel the suffering because the events in the karmic pattern are placed to show certain things happening to us supposing it's certain that we'll have an accident and be severely injured the accident takes place we are not injured somebody says this could have been very bad help has come event has also taken place this will happen in life all the time if you seek help initiates have this big advantage of always asking for help don't think it's putting too much burden on the master why say that when i was young and realized who my master was one day he was giving a discourse and they had taken up you know they had chanters parties who would read from the scripture he would interpret and give explanations the particular shabd the verse that came that day said kaya nagar nagar hai niko which is sauda har ras ki je literally translated it means this body is like a township it's a city in that you can do real trade and if you want to real trade such as sauda go inside and do it i heard heard that i said what is real my master is real i'll go and ask him this i said master you spoke today about such as how the real deal taking place inside i see you outside can i make the deal thinking that you are inside although i see you outside you must be the same inside he said sure i said a sauda trade means i give you something you give me something isn't that the meaning he said yes i said can i give you 
all my worries and problems and all that and you give me all the happiness and joy i said this master said deal done from that day he has kept his word i kept mine it's not easy i was very happy i have been from that moment living a very free because of the deal master gave it nobody can get out of worry of any kind i know master's handling it i said what a great deal i got it worked i came to the united states and met disciples of many masters in one of the gathering they asked me to say something and i mentioned this this deal that i had and they were so much against what i did terrible thing you did you put all the burden of your worries on the master is that how you love a master if you when you love a master you should be taking over his worries what did you do this is a most selfish unfair thing that you did i had never heard this before it shook me it shook me not because there was any change in the deal it shook me that people don't have any idea what a master is they think master is just a human being they had no idea the power of a master and they don't realize this deal is real and everybody can make that deal but when you make a deal very easy for the master to keep his part very difficult for us people come to master master take away my worry and they get out of the room and say i am worrying whether i ask for the right thing <laughs> they worry accompanies them if you don't keep your part of the deal you can't expect that the deal will go through with the master this is a great deal imagine the power of a master therefore any problem any issue if you are initiated by a perfect master you can ask for it and he will help you jesus is love God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that that whosoever believes will be saved. John three sixteen. Do you believe this? Jesus is love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes will be saved John 3:16 Do you believe this? Yes I do. I believed that at that time when Jesus was there he was the only beloved son available to the Jews at that time. And those who believed in him definitely got salvation. nowhere has it been said that jesus will not reappear jesus himself said i will come again so this whole mistaken notion that the only beloved son is referring to no other being be jesus or be same level of jesus is totally wrong he never said that read his writings read what he said read the new testament again and show me anywhere where he said no future master will ever come no future jesus will ever come he says he will come remember that so don't just cut out a little piece from the bible and say that's the whole truth read the whole of it he said he will come again he has come many times again will you recognize him i met one person a christian who told me jesus will come i'll recognize him so how will you recognize there be holes in his hands that's our understanding he'll see are the holes in the hands they say that jesus went to god it's just a made up story jesus went to god and god said i had a son crucified holes in his hands he said i am he said pinocchio would also hold it in his hands and in his feet so therefore 
why would you assume that a physical body decomposed by any means no body has ever survived ever in the physical plane that body will come back that you will see the holes in the hands don't you realize what jesus was you talk of spirit of jesus and spirit of jesus cannot be the body of jesus he himself said that that the spirit is not the body and he says the kingdom from which he comes the kingdom of god is within you do we read that part the real jesus is within you and let me tell you something true story there was a gangster member of a gang they used to commit robbery and he found out that when the dera baba jamal singh was being built they had designed it the architects had designed it to put some gold toppings on the minarets there'll be gold toppings so great master said if people can donate enough gold we will put it otherwise you can have a ordinary building it doesn't matter people were keen to see a beautiful satsangar place for having discourses from the master so many women donated their jewelry so many people made donations for that so lot of jewelry was sitting in different small places the dera was very small just a few houses and it a gang of robbers heard that jewelry gold jewelry is being collected to be put on a building they sent one of their men who was a recce man that we used to go for reconnaissance to find out where the gold would be how to rob it how to arrange the theft of that gold he was a muslim guy a lot of muslims were followers of great master sort of six hindus christian every faith atheists were following him also who no do not believe in god were also following him this guy came a great master was giving a discourse he knew he gives a discourse at 5 o'clock in the evening and he went around the houses and he saw some women sitting there why are you sitting here not gone to the satsang for the discourse no no we are taking care of the gold where is the gold in that box he said i have never seen such an easy way to rob a place they are just sitting there watching the gold sitting in a box next to them went to another house a few children were playing what are you doing here we taking care of the gold where is the gold on that shelf he said i have never seen such a easy thing this is the easiest place to rob all the gold so he said i'll go and inform my gang is very easy just go when the master is giving a discourse the women and children are there you can just pick up and walk away a thought came to his head what kind of a person is giving a discourse that people don't care for their gold and their jewelry and their wealth what could he be saying to people just a human being telling something to people they forget about taking care of their wealth so he decided to go and see what what is he saying so he left the there where the hall where the discourse was going on was an open place just a tent he left the houses and went to the open place and stood look at great master at that moment great master was saying that power of the word exists in everybody including gangsters and robbers he got shocked how did he recognize me how does he know me he couldn't go he waited and went back at this satsang finished he walked up and he said how did you know that i am a robber gangster as you told me direct looking at me that that power is also in the gangsters and robbers he said i don't know who you are great master said, i don't know who you are he said no don't tell me you told me about gangsters and robbers great master said, i say that every day that's not a big deal he said no no don't play this with me i know you know something i want to follow you he never went back to the gang great master said 
to live here if you want to be with me welcome i'll teach you how to meditate and go inside but if you want to live here you have to work because we don't believe in living on charity because that creates karma you have to pay them back sometimes if you do work and get paid for it no new karma is created you paying off side by side what do you know how can, what can you do he said i only know how to rob people he said you can't do that here but don't you have any other skill and he thought he said yes when our gang used to go for robberies on a truck we had a getaway truck and the i was electrician really and when the dynamo armature would break up i would repair it it was said i have a job for you they don't electric power here we get a generator you run it yes must first generator was brought and ran with a belt on it and a diesel oil engine and produced power and first light was first lighted at the great master's house from that generator he meditated as hard as he was robbing people his love and devotion grew so much he said master can i go back in time and see he said you can see everything not only your life you can see any life you want everything is all intact there nothing passes away only we feel we have moved on time and therefore become past all past is alive and you can see i want to see prophet muhammad if possible jesus christ sure you can he went back and saw exactly jesus christ as he was teaching at that time he saw muhammad and how he got the ihram and so on personally and exactly as historically recorded so there is no question that you can not go to the past and check it out what we are thinking about don't live outside live where the truth is truth about everything truth about religion truth about history truth about anything you can check out only requirement is go within jesus did not say he will not come again he expressly said i will come again therefore jesus was referring to enlightened people coming to here to take them back home that's what he said so that is why that's always happening it can't be for a small section of time somebody came and the seekers of that time went all others are condemned what kind of father would that be who would create this kind of race father is all kind we are all children of the same father same god one god and therefore we call it by different names does not make different gods all religions refer to one god they are the same same god they are not two so that is why no matter how we have been brought up these assumptions that we make from our associates from our parents from our studies from religion assumptions come in the way even of our discovery of the truth inside you should be open enough if something has to be found inside you not outside from somebody else look inside don't go by what somebody else experience go by what you yourself experience you'll find out the truth dear master i've been wondering if it's okay to become an organ donor or not i have been wondering if it is okay to become an organ donor or not you can become an organ donor just an organ just a piece of your physical body nothing great don't be a donor of your soul everything else you can give away <laughs> on the astral plane do the mind's habits of fear and doubt persist on the astral plane do the mind's habits of fear and doubt persist yes they do the same mind same doubts doubts don't disappear they neither disappear in the physical plane nor astral plane nor causal plane they all mental planes doubts and fear stay doubts and fears 
disappear completely if you cross the mind and go to what is called Indian language parabrahm what's called the spiritual stage above the causal stage you are there there will be never any fear or doubt left because you know uncertainty comes when you don't know doubt comes when you don't know fear comes when you don't know if you know there is no doubt and no fear and that happens when you grow beyond the mind the souls travel to like ground points do souls travel to lagrange points i don't know lagrange points it's a it is a small township near chicago do you mean that <laughs> how do i surrender my will to god how do i surrender my will to god by letting god decide what you want to do don't let your mind decide let god decide does god sit inside us yes how will i know what is my will what is god's will explain in the morning what comes intuitively is god's will what comes automatically by circumstances god's will what you think and decide is mind's will another mystic poet jalaluddin rumi maulana room he is what miss masnavi's his poetry in one of the poems he writes people ask me how do i know what is god's will isn't everything god's will including my mind he said the answer is very simple god gives you a spade to dig dig god gives you a pen to write write whatever circumstances around you require do it that's god's will when you start thinking what to do that's your will scientists are not sure what dark matter is what is dark matter scientists are not sure what dark matter is what is dark matter i am also a scientist i don't know <laughs> it is merely that when we study energy i am going to tell you something interesting just the question is brought up that interesting point i don't know how many of you heard of quantum physics if you have heard of quantum physics this was a discovery made long ago by a scientist who was trying to see is light energy or matter is it a wave or a particle when the light was put through two holes it went through both holes and became a wave on the screen ahead when he observed it it became a particle became a dot on the other side he did not know whether to call it wave or to call it matter or to call it uh, an atom it was a photon he did know a photon is a wave or a particle he said it can be both and he called it quanta and that's the birth of the quantum physics it was a very remarkable thing which wasn't properly noticed that the ob- human observation has changed the wave into a particle has changed the energy into matter which is very difficult to do but an observation has done it so quantum physics became a special study where we are not sure where matter is where wave is which can become by observation when i used to go to my physics classes in college they used to draw the map of a hydrogen atom in a big circle because it has got a orbit and one electron they put a dot of an electron and go and make a circle on a page problem came 
how do you know it's this orbit and not this orbit or this orbit at that distance from the nucleus there can be million orbits just by shifting the orbit how do you know where it is very recent studies where we can go with a laser beam even to the level of an electron experiments have shown that if you put your laser anywhere at the distance from the nucleus the point is there electron is there no matter where up high low any side distance should be correct particle is there therefore they had to revise the map of the electron they had to now put like a wave around the nucleus hydrogen atom and the wave is the electron it can become a particle if you observe it if you observe it and it becomes i, I hope you many of you might be student of physics if you observe it it becomes a particle only at that place nowhere else supposing you put two laser beams or more at the same distance there'll be two electrons when you withdraw only one is left with a minute dif difference in time which one you put first will be the only one living the rest will disappear what is this how can something create matter or it's a hidden matter that becomes revealed to us by an observation measurement still baffling the scientists today in understanding but they still use it they are going to develop quantum computers our computers work on a digital language in which there are two digits actually only one they call it one and zero music is being written in one and zero pictures are being made in one and zero just the number is large but they have certain formula you can make anything now on a computer using only digital language of a sequence of ones and zeros if you know what ones and zeros is how it's created in the computer in the chip you're not created by putting a zero there's nothing to put zero we nothing you can't put a zero you can put a one when the electricity can pass it's called one if it is cannot pass it's called zero they design a nice chip where electricity can pass some points cannot pass somewhere that's the whole secret of the circuitry and that is why we can write a language as zero and one and do so much with those little chips if that is true the ones and zeros who decides where the one should be where the zero the song decides the picture decides the words decide that's what decides if we observe and can change a wave into particle can we observe and then decide what the digital language should say quantum physics says yes that means there can be new computers coming up and this is advanced information i'm giving you new computers will be coming up which will type out what you are thinking and observing and not what is programmed their programming will depend upon your observation this is not something very new the greatest scientist einstein albert einstein before he died about a month before he died in his last notes he wrote i have spent my life studying the observation what i observed i forgot to study the role of the observer fully because of quantum mechanics the observer has a big role in changing what you are seeing if you take a general meaning of what he is saying it means we create everything the energy is being collapsed into matter by observation of human observation this is very true according to metaphysics according to scientists saints saints are saying the same thing that your observation creates what you see and is coming from inside now this was great scientist he died before he could carry on further observation on that another scientist paralyzed stephen hawking recently died he was studying the origin of the universe spent his whole life where did this universe come from and he said 
an accepted theory looks likely that a big bang created it that means there was some singularity from which space and time sprang and the space to some means which we still observe a study has just been set up with 11.6 million dollars grant to find out how in space became matter the study now just announced yesterday so he was studying what was there if anything before time space itself came which is part of the universe the big bang theory says even time was created from that time in the last interview he gives he makes a very strange observation he says i have been pondering over this what was existing before time was creating i now feel it was imaginary time and then he is asked what do you think is imaginary time and he says imaginary time is like when we sit with friends and think only 15 minutes have passed the clock says one hour has passed 15 minutes is imaginary time and clock is sec- physical time imaginary time pre existed physical time can you realize he is talking of the astral plane where imaginary time exists prior to the physical time and he died could not tell us anything more it's very interesting how the science itself is coming to the same conclusions they are trying to move from outside into inside they are finding that dark matter contains dark energy which cannot be accounted for they are calculating this purely because something is invisible but the energy supports that that has to be there therefore they call it dark matter dark energy but the truth is that at the same time they are understanding that the energy cannot be explained even if there was dark matter is explained one time they thought that 17% of the matter is visible to us the rest is dark today they say 6% is visible the rest is all dark because of further studies on radiation of energy so what does it mean this study of energy and matter is leading them to a conclusion that there has to be more than one dimension in which we live this multidimensional was also mentioned by stephen hawking as a possible explanation multi universes is being talked of now in science they sometimes call it multi universes sometimes they call it multi dimensional according to some scientists to account for the current energy radiation accounting for it there has to be at least 11 dimensions i'm not talking of metaphysics physics these are professors of physics telling us and they give a strange example because they have to speak in layman's language to explain to us and they give us an explanation that this equilibrium on this universe is perfect supposing it was not perfect supposing the earth moves a little bit few feet towards the sun sun will pull it and destroy it supposing it moves a few feet away from the sun it will fly away and not be in orbit anymore we are so perfectly in equilibrium this was not only discovered by him mathematically another mathematician discovered i'm telling you for those who are studying these things his name was dr nash he got a nobel prize for his paper on equilibrium a theory of equilibrium how important it is to create perfection in the working of the universe he said everything is in perfect place at this time whatever had to happen has happened to create this perfection we are living on a planet which is placed in right equilibrium so when they talk of that the right equilibrium dr nash got a nobel prize a movie was made on his life if you remember it was called a beautiful mind in that movie they showed what was actually happening in his life where did he find this equilibrium 
he found on a blackboard on which nothing was written. He saw all the equations there. On a window pane, transparent window pane, people are standing outside. He's seeing the equations of that blank window pane. Where are those? Where was he seeing? His wife said he's hallucinating. Other scientists said he's hallucinating. There is no such person. Where is he picking it up from? And he developed a whole theory for which he got a Nobel Prize and saw things which don't exist physically at all. All picking up from the astral plane, from where they come, from where they copied here. So here was a scientist, a mathematician, who picked up this thing from there. He did not believe that these things he's seeing are not real, except several years later, when he saw that he sees a person with a hat who comes to him that I represent government, as you have to send these papers to government and put them in a particular post office, which is in the movie also, a true story. And he writes papers and puts them there, and the man says, government is studying everything you are doing. As years pass, he notices that there's a child with that person and a lady who always come with that man and he has grown old, his wife has grown old, his colleagues and scientists have grown old, they remain the same age. That caused him a doubt. So what I am seeing, others are not seeing. Till then he believed that what he saw is the only reality. That is what happens if by accident or by karma, you can pick up information. All great inventions and discoveries have been made from the astral plane. It's never been made from the data available here. Everything comes from there. So that is why he came and he gave this information mathematically. There has to be more universes. How do these people explain the dimensions? They give an example. Supposing you go to a bar and ask for orange juice. The bartender gives you strawberry juice. You think he made a mistake. These scientists say, no, he delivered the orange juice to you in another dimension. You happen to be here, you are also in 11 dimensions at the same time. This is not metaphysics, this is physics. Today, today is physics. So you can remember that dark matter is being explained in so many ways. It is just hidden from physical observation. Go to astral plane, you'll understand where it comes from, from the astral plane. Dimensions come from astral plane. They're all coming from what we have been describing for centuries. It's a level of experience that's non-physical, but full of sensory perception. Everything is coming from there. Last question. My question is about vegetarianism. My daughter argues the humans capture cows. Some are even tortured. Cows are taken away from them just to provide milk to human beings. Please clarify. My question is about veganism. My daughter argues that humans capture cows. Some are even tortured. Calves are taken away from them just to provide milk to human beings. Please clarify. Yeah, that is true. In some countries, even I have seen movies of cows being maltreated. Injured, treated badly, just to get more milk and get more meat. They slaughter them for meat and they enhance the milk so it should be 60 pounds and not 10 pounds. Not everywhere. For example, India, we worship the cow. Cows worship there, tortured here. So the rule does not apply everywhere that because of torture of cows we shouldn't drink milk or we shouldn't do this. India, cows are kept for giving milk. Cow's milk is supposed to be good for children, good for sick people, buffalo milk. 
is for an anybody so therefore all milk is not the same i can't tell an indian having a cow in his house don't drink milk he is taking such good care of the cow i can tell somebody who is familiar with the torture here you can be vegan don't take any dairy at all so there's not a single answer that i can give to this question so it depends where you are what you are aware of how the cows are treated there's continuously legislation being passed even in the countries where cows are not treated properly that they should be treated properly humanely the society set up even in these countries for humane societies to take care of animals well when we we recommend on the spiritual path you should be a vegetarian why because vegetables have a lower type of mind and life their sensitivity is not the same we human beings have nor is it the same that cows and buffaloes have nor is the same as dogs and cats have nor is it the same that birds and reptiles have nor what insects have is less than that and the whole gradation of how our consciousness operates in different species of life forms so we find that nothing exists which can create life for another life form without some kind of killing some kind of extinguishing of life somewhere plants have life also so whether you are vegetarian you could also be killing plants the same kind of soul that you have but the effect of that is not the same on very important part of our consciousness called attention and as i told you earlier attention is the secret for good meditation we have to concentrate attention the power to concentrate attention is affected by what we eat there was a big big holy person who said i talked to me he was eating meat and i said you meditate your eating meat affects you he said prove i said you kill an animal the killing affects your power to concentrate attention i said a simple example you have a book that you read with concentration you can't really understand a book if you don't concentrate on what you are reading supposing your normal speed of reading that kind of book is a minute a page go and kill somebody and try to read the same book you won't even read few lines in a minute it takes you much longer to read that page that affects your power of concentrating if you kill an animal recovery time is less vegetable you hardly notice every extinguishing of life affects your power to concentrate attention therefore if you extinguish life at the lowest level the plant life your meditation is better and you make a better start on meditation people sometimes don't realize this is the real reason for those who want to meditate that the food you eat makes a difference but there is not only food you eat it also means how much you eat if we are gluttons filling up our bellies with vegetarian food no meditation oh i am a vegetarian so i am going to heaven vegetarianism doesn't take you to heaven there some people believe that just by certain food you can do it i remember going to japan and there was a zen group z n z d n z e n the zen group said the secret of enlightenment is in the grain of rice special rice grown there eat that you will be enlightened i was surprised a grain of rice can give you enlightenment i said i like to eat lot of it i had whole plate of that rice no enlightenment I say I'd like to now meet my friends who are enlightened by eating that rice. Belief system only. Rice can't give you enlightenment. 
Oh, too much rice can give you indigestion, but not enlightenment. Such beliefs exist. This man told me, the holy man, I understand. If I kill some animal, it will affect me. I don't kill. Somebody else kills. I just buy the meat from the store and eat it. So, if there is a karma affected on the consciousness, on power of concentration, that fellow is suffering, not me. I said, are you aware of this, that he is suffering? Of course, I can understand that, that awareness of his suffering affects you. You can't help it. And the fact that a certain level of life has been extinguished for your food affects your consciousness. Subconsciousness picks it up even more than what you're consciously believing. That holy man said, I don't believe that. I said, all right, I'll give you another answer. You are meditating for long periods already. Why not try one month of meditation, the same rate you are doing, by becoming vegetarian? After one month, he became a vegetarian. Nothing like proof of the pudding lies in the eating. Instead of my arguing, I said, just try it out. I say the same thing to the people who say, how does it matter what we eat? We are talking about spiritual things. And we are sitting in a physical body. If you are sitting in a spiritual state, nothing matters. You're sitting in a physical body. Everything matters. Physical things matter. Food matters. How much you eat matters. And I say how much you eat matters because it's important not to overeat. You avoid meat and overeat, no good. Eat what the body needs. Now there is a problem in that. I don't know how many of you know it. The cells in our body communicate with other cells. And the communication to the brain is almost instant from most cells, except the stomach. The stomach lining, where it's full and should say, I am no longer hungry, takes 20 minutes to send this message. Did you know that? 20 minutes to send a message I am no longer hungry, I am full. We overeat in those 20 minutes. I met a group in Japan itself. They said, when we eat toward the end, we leave a gap of 20 minutes between the last dish and the penultimate dish. Then they don't overeat. This is strange, but it is true that the sense of fulfillment and having no hunger reaches the brain 20 minutes later and that those 20 minutes we overeat. If you ate half of what you're eating, you'll find you'll be more healthy. Try it out. People overeat because of that particular fact. And that is why eating properly, eating as simple as you can, is also equally important. Not only that, I found a couple they said, come and have dinner with me. We will cook it with love and devotion. I said, all right. The wife was still cooking. Husband said, getting late. Why don't you do it early? Guest is waiting. Very angry. She said, don't you know I'm making with love and devotion? <laughs> Very transparent. <laughs> if you're angry, making pure vegetarian food, is still not going to be good. It's not only pure meals that you're eating. There's so many other things that come along with it. So that is why we just recommend vegetarian food. It helps in meditation and makes it easier to go within. And we recommend that you eat less. If necessary, sleep less. And more importantly, talk less. I should have stopped. <laughs> and do more meditation. Thank you very much.